Happy Thirsty Thursday. You're tuning in with Jim Bachman of the Maryland Distillers Guild and Grow and Fortify. We normally have a uh, fancy intro video. The video software today is being a little strange and for some reason will not uh, allow me to export this video appropriately. So I apologize for that. I will uh, see if I can export this while Braden is talking in a few minutes. Maybe we'll play it as an outro uh, to today's chat. But uh, we've got a wonderful conversation for you today. Uh, happy Earth Day to all the Earthlings out there. Uh, Braden and I were just chatting a little bit about how it's great that this talk is falling on Earth Day proper. Um, Braden from McClintock and his team have a really cool program that we're going to be discussing today. Uh, we'll get some clarification on pronunciations. We'll learn how to make some cocktails. And uh, we'll learn everything that we need to know about uh, about what McClintock is doing for Green Week. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce my friend Braden Bumpers. Braden, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Jen. Absolutely. Thanks for joining me. Uh, again, I apologize for the technological hiccups there. Everything today seems to have been on my end. So that is uh, definitely not a position I like to be in. <laughs> it's You have a much more... Uh, technical knowledge base than I do. So uh, you're, you're already already doing good. So from the get-go, before I screw up, I come from the school of gin starts with a soft G. Jif is pronounced Jif and not Gif. Is this a gimlet or is this a gimlet? This is a gimlet. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, fair enough. So tell us all about uh, gimlets for Green Week, because that's what we're here to talk about. You guys have an awesome program. I want everybody to know what's going on and how they can help you guys. Absolutely. So Gimlets for Green Week is a, a brand new program that we just unrolled this year. Um, it runs from April 15th and it goes through the end of this weekend so until April 26th. Um, one of the things that's been very important to our company from the very beginning is we want it to be a very sustainably minded, um, earth conscious company um, with everything that we do here. So we utilize um, uh, a proprietary uh, water recycling system that has reduced our wastewater here at the distillery by about half a million gallons a year. Um, we're one of the only distilleries in the U.S. that's 100% renewable energy powered for all of our electric uses here. Um, and we're Maryland's first and only organic certified distillery. So we work directly with farms um, to encourage uh, sustainable and environmentally friendly um, uh, growing practices to grow these non-GMO heirloom grains for us. Um, and it's been really great. You know, we have a lot of customers that come to us and they're very interested in sustainability, organic certification. Um, and, but we wanted to do something to get all of the restaurants involved because they've, they've had a rough year last year. Um, and I think they're all really itching to do something fun. So uh, we came up with this idea uh, with our distributor, Bacchus Importers, uh, to do gimlets for green meat. So we set it up where all a restaurant needs to do. They uh, come up with some variation on a gimlet recipe, and then they feature it for this last week. And it runs, again, through the end of this weekend, so you can still go out and grab a gimlet. Um, we've seen some amazing variations on them from using the rye whiskey, to using uh, you know, some, some really interesting aperitifs. Uh, and then for every, uh, every gimlet sold, that goes directly to a donation for us to raise money uh, with the Department of Natural Resources here in Maryland to plant a, uh, a full mature tree in the Chesapeake Bay watershed. And what that does is it helps reduce erosion. Um, it helps keep the waterways clean um, and it keeps our uh, ecosystem more healthy. Uh, so it's been a really cool program. We already in the first week um, have uh, raised enough to plant um, about 150 trees and we have a lot more to go through this weekend. So it's been a really fun program. Um, if you're interested in checking it out, uh, we have all of the participating restaurants. Now we have 45 restaurants in Maryland, DC and Delaware. Um, that you can visit, order a gimlet, and you can help raise money to plant these trees as well. So uh, it's been really, really fun. You know, we weren't sure. We, we, like I said, I think we were expecting five to 10 restaurants. And the fact that we got 45 people to sign up immediately, it's, it's really great. So were you courting those uh, restaurant accounts personally, or was that work that your wholesaler was doing with you? Yeah, so that was, it was a partnership between us and, and our distributor. Um, you know, we have a good relationship with a lot of uh, restaurants, especially here in Frederick, that we know 
um, you know, have an interest or care about uh, sustainability or their environmental impact. So we had some very early signups here that we tested the idea out with, kind of refined exactly how it would work. Um, and then our distributor just, you know, connected us with like-minded people from across the tri-state area. And it's been, it's been very cool because there's so many restaurants that really put care into their sourcing, to their water use, to their electric. It's really, you know, it, it's fun to connect with people that have the same ideals that we do. That's really awesome that your wholesale partner is uh, interested in taking a, a kind of a promotion like this under their wing. It doesn't seem like something that would be front of mind for most businesses. You know, that you're thinking profitability right off the bat, how many placements you're getting, how are you getting through this crazy time? And to add this as like something else is, is really wonderful movement. Yes. And it it truly is a partnership. You know, they're eating a lot of these profits as well that that we can donate to the DMR. So it's, you know, we're really lucky. We really like working with uh, Bacchus um, wholesalers in a great portfolio and, you know, they're not just about profits. They have a multiple bottom line and think about the environment and other things as well. That's awesome. And uh, when you said that McClintock is kind of a sustainable plant on its own, are you doing a lot of that through like uh, electrical offset through your electrical provider or do you have like green green energy plant we, there? So we um, initially, when we moved into our building, uh, we had looked about actually putting uh, both uh, straight solar panels, but also solar water heating um, uh, installations on a roof. Um, being in the historic district of Frederick, uh, that got a little complicated. Um, so we ended up deciding to work with a company called uh, Clean Choice. Uh, they're down in DC, they're a local company. They're able to make sure that all of uh, the money we pay into the grid goes directly to uh, mostly wind farms in West Virginia. Um, but also some solar opportunities in Maryland as well. Um, And it's, you know, a a way to to make sure that everything that we're putting out there goes to projects that we care about. That's awesome. I think that that's a really great thing. And it's something that uh, has become more and more popular across the craft beverage industry nationwide. Yeah. Yeah. I think people, you know, a, a large portion of people really do care about, you know, the, the ethics and the, production of what they're buying from, you know, the farm that they get their meat from to, you know, the, the plants like ours that they process and make goods like alcohol. So it's, you know, it's really exciting to see, even in the last few years, the interest in that has gone way up across the board. And do you, you see that kind of as a, as a whole sum of what you're doing with your organic labeling and your ingredient sourcing and all that, this is all part of the, the, uh, I guess probably a secondary mission of what, McClintock is all about is making a, a, a meaningful impact if you're making any at all and trying to minimize what that is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we try to look at it as like a whole systems approach where we look from the top down and a lot of them, you know, overlap. You know, part of the reason we're able to create really high quality products is because we're using these organic, you know, heirloom non GMO ingredients. And that in turn promotes sustainable and responsible growing practices, which in turn gets more farms locally to see, well, this is a, you know, a way to make more money than growing Monsanto chicken feed for Purdue. And then we get more farms on on board and we can increase our production. So it's a cyclical, um, you know, way to do things. And we see, uh, we, we try to look at everything from the top down and how we can have the most impact. Well, it's really encouraging that you have so many interested partners, especially in the restaurant space that are uh, embracing this and want to get behind it because it it shows that you have some leadership in the industry through what you're doing. But it also shows that, you know, there are a lot of other people that share the concerns and you may not think that when you go out to eat at, you know, Hooch and Banner in downtown Frederick, but they may be supporting something like this in a way that you, you wouldn't necessarily expect. Absolutely. And that's really kind of part of the cool thing of this program is there's a lot of people out there that are doing this stuff behind the scenes. And you would never know that, you know, they put in, you know, a high efficiency lighting in their kitchen and they're really working to reduce the amount of grease and fats that's going into the water. And they're doing all of this stuff, but you wouldn't know. And this is a really cool program to connect the dots for, for somebody like me. If I'm just going out to, to eat at dinner and I can see they're taking these steps you know, then they're, you know, also doing stuff beyond the the Gimlet's for Green Week program as well. That's awesome. Well, I appreciate the uh, kind of the cultural background of what you guys have going on there and your uh, focus and and commitment to sustainability. I think that's pretty cool. And 
as a resident of Frederick, I think it's great that you're a business with that kind of mindset in my community. I appreciate that as well. So that's very, very neat. Um, so let's talk a little bit about gimlets. What in the heck is a gimlet? Where does it come from? What do you know about them? Yes. And uh, the floor is yours. I'll talk to you in a half hour. Yeah, definitely. So, <laughs> so gimlets, uh, I think, is a criminally underrated kind of classic cocktail. So gimlets kind of had their heyday in the in the 50s as like, uh, you know, in the rise of the dinner party era. Uh, gimlets became really popular because they're very simple to make. Um, and they're very spirit forward. And that's what we liked about them is, you know, a classic gimlet is, uh, you know, three parts gin, one part lime juice, shake over ice, serve in a martini glass. That's it. Um, so it really does like it, it gives a way to highlight the actual gin or the vodka or whatever you're using. Um, the second thing I love about gimlets are its versatility. So that's a gimlet. But you can take that basic recipe because it's just two ingredients and really elevate it to the next level. And we have people like, uh, like you mentioned, Hooch and Banner that are using um, Old Bay and some rye whiskey um, from Sagamore Distillery, another, another local Maryland distillery, to make their gimmick. Um, we have people that are using our uh, white whiskey and muddled jalapenos to make a, make a spicy gimlet. And it's really like that versatility that really drew us into this program because a lot of the bartenders um, uh, across the state have really stepped it up and made some very cool uh, gimlet recipes that uh, I would have never thought about. <laughs> Uh, uh, speaking about the versatility of your gimlets, I did share in the comments your Green Week gimlet recipe ideas. Uh, there's some really cool ones in there. Were those all recipes that you guys made, or did you borrow any of those from your re uh, restaurant partners? So the four uh, gimlets that we have, we have an in-house uh, mixologist, uh, Alex Zahorchak. He came up with those recipes. So we did provide, because there were uh, you know some restaurants that aren't necessarily you know, big into cocktails, but they wanted to participate in the program. So these are really simple, easy to make uh, cocktails that really focus on the flavor profile of our spirits, which are a little bit different than your standard, you know, London dry uh, gin or your, your standard vodka. Um, I, I, we, we've been focusing all week on our social media, promoting gimlets that restaurants have been doing from around Maryland, DC and Delaware. So if you check out our Instagram and our Facebook, um, you can see some inspiration for some some other kind of more more wild and more interesting ones that um, I myself would never be able to make, um, but I definitely would go enjoy at, at some of these restaurants. And then you have one of these on your page that's listed as a Gibson. So what's the difference between a Gimlet and a Gibson? Sure. Um, so uh, the the uh, the Gibson is one that we put on there to um, to give an alternative. Um, because we did find when we were first piloting it, this that uh, some people just uh, some people just don't like lime juice, uh, which is totally fine. Um, and the Gibson is uh, another kind of classic same era cocktail. Um, it's generally a little bit more whiskey focused. You've probably seen them if they've uh, like a pearled onion as a garnish. That's that's what most people know as, as the Gibson in there. Um, so we have been allowing people to do um, Gibsons as well as, you know, if they don't want to do Gimlets, you can do Gibsons for Green Week as well. Um, so, yeah, I, I like them. They're really fun. You don't find Gimlets or Gibsons so much anymore. So we wanted to, to throw some of those out there too. Well, I happened to have a small bottle of the uh, blood orange saffron liqueur left. So I am drinking the Gibson right now, and it is a delicious recipe. Yeah, I'm glad it's really it needed ours. You know, uh, oftentimes you'll see the Gibsons with um, uh, with uh, uh, whiskey. You can make them with vodka. You can make them with gin. Um, we did ours with our gardener's gin and the blood orange saffron, and that's a lot of citrus in there, so it's really bright, kind of counteracts some of those savory notes you usually get with the, with the Gibson. It's got a beautiful color too. Oh, thank you. Uh, so, why don't you show us your uh, your straight up gimlet. You have, like I said, these great recipes. You guys are calling this one just your McClintock Green Week gimlet. Yes. Um, it looks fabulous from the photo that you have on uh, your website. It looks like it would be stunningly refreshing, but today yeah. is not the day for a super refreshing 
cocktail. <laughs> really out there today for sure. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'll throw it together. This is really fun. It's it's kind of more of a traditional style gimlet, but we have some special ingredients here to, to mix it up a little bit. So to make this, I have my shaker. Um, I like to serve it in a martini glass or a coupe. Um, and then I have our, our jigger here to measure these out. So this one will be featuring our forager gin, um, which is our flagship gin still, um, probably what, what most people are, are familiar with, with our products are familiar with the forager. And this one is very gin forward. So this is three ounces of forager. And then I have some fresh squeezed lime juice. Do half an ounce of the lime juice in here. And then we use a little bit of simple syrup here, just a half ounce of simple syrup. And then we like to top it off just a quarter ounce of our uh, ginger lime cordial, which is our summer seasonal cordial we just uh, came out with for this, for this program. Um, it is uh, kind of an old world style uh, liqueur that's made with uh, fresh sliced ginger, uh, lime, and then rather than basing this in sugar, like a lot of cordials uh, or liqueurs, we base this in apple cider vinegar. So it's gonna be a little bit more tart, a little bit more refreshing, um, gives a nice acidity to a very um, uh, tart cocktail like this. And for this one, uh, you can go as high as half an ounce, but I like a little, uh, uh, about three, uh, one quarter of an ounce. Just a splash in there. The description of that flavor profile almost sounds a little bit like a shrub. It is. So, yeah. So our cordial line is very much like a, like an alcoholic shrub is what we're going for in that one. And we have a lot of um, the, the next one I'll be making will be using our blood orange saffron cordial, which is our spring seasonal. We rotate them using fresh ingredients. Um, and they're, they're uh, pretty fun. The, the ginger, you know, there's a lot of ginger liqueurs out there. So when we did this one, we said we want to be the most ginger, ginger spirit there is. So in this 375 milliliter bottle, there's half a pound of fresh ginger. So this is jam packed with that really nice, like, wow, flavored, you know, uh, uh, American ginger flavor. That must be a lovely production day to smell that. It smells really good in here for all of the cords old days. They're, they're really nice. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to put in some ice in here. While you're, uh, while you're mixing, can I ask if you have any, uh, any warnings of things not to do when trying to prepare a Gimlet or Gibson? Are there any, uh, are there any? I would definitely research? say, uh, like just, be aware of like the flavor of the gin that you're mixing with. Cause I have definitely had some gins. Uh, I'd say all of ours are very suitable to be making gimlets, which is one of the reasons we chose them. Um, but I've had some gins that I very much like that are very floral um, that when you add that lime juice, it can become this almost, um, I call it like a shampoo flavor that you get with them. It just doesn't mix very well. So I find gins that are a little bit more spice forward, a little bit more citrus forward, a little bit more earthy or botanical, and less of the more kind of um, floral, sweeter style gins tend to work better. Um, Got it. It's uh, totally, you know, it's it's up to up to your your taste profile what you like. For sure. Yeah, you can't argue matters of taste. I just always wonder if there's a, a way not to go. You know. Yes. Yeah. There's definitely. I just have like you know try the gin first and. You, You'll probably know right away if it's something that will work well or not in there. Um, okay, so we'll shake this up here. All right, and let me get the stringer.
How about that? Good fill. It's almost like this is something you guys do. I am uh, definitely the worst bartender at this entire company. So uh, bear, bear with me for this. I think you've done a wonderful job so far. I would come and drink that happily. Yeah, absolutely. So there we go. Let me know if I can hold it a little bit closer. That's going to be the color you like. It's that nice pale green uh, color. I get a good shake. So it's got a little bit of froth at the top there from the uh, simple syrup. That's a, that's a tasty gimlet right there. That, that looks uh, delicious, man. That, that is, uh, you've opened my eyes already. I've, I've worked as a bartender in the past. I've had people order these. It was never anything that I ever thought to like sit down and drink myself. Um, it's definitely, uh, I, I would say, a criminally underappreciated cocktail because it's, it's very simple. So sometimes, uh, you know, people in the cocktail world think simple is not good, but I find, you know, some of these classic cocktails are, are my all time favorites. Do you have any recommended like uh, food pairing that you might suggest with this? So gimlets, um, really good. Uh, seafood is generally where my mind goes for this. Um, I think we had some uh, Isabella's uh, Taverna here in Frederick. Um, they're doing the gimlets for Green Week. I grabbed, uh, they had a, a sea bass and a gimlet is a beautiful pairing. It worked very, very, very well. Um, uh, definitely like lighter dishes this works with because of that citrus. So like, you know, uh, uh, like a Greek salad would be good. Uh, some like grilled chicken dishes. It, it's pretty, pretty universal to pair this one. Um, well, and again, great. with the classic uh, Gibsons, that, that one I was talking about with the, with the Old Bay and rye whiskey uh, Gibson, I would have that probably with like a burger or like a nice steak with that one. So. Really, really depends on, on what you're going for here. I love it. Yeah. And looking at the recipes that you guys have, it seems like there's probably a Gimlet or a Gibson that will work with just about every culinary option. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think we have one with the uh, the spice pear that's like a, a dessert Gimlet um, that's really good. It's almost like, I describe it, it's like a, like a chocolate covered lime that you'd have at the end of the day. It's very, very tasty. That sounds delicious. Yeah. Um, so what, uh, what kind of news do you guys have going on other than the Gimlets for Green Week right now? What else are you guys up to? Um, so, uh, we are, uh, getting back to our, our kind of regular operations here. So we have, um, uh, tours and tastings now going on, uh, at limited capacity, but we are back to doing tours. So if you want to, um, come down and see. We do all of our production here on site. Uh, you can see from when the grain moves in to milling, fermentation, distillation. Um, uh, so those are running during the weekends. Um, we also are starting back up our um, Distilling 101 classes um, that, again, is also in limited capacity. Those are really fun. If, uh, if you have anybody who is interested in kind of taking their knowledge of spirits in general to the next level, it's a full day class, it's very hands-on. We mill, mash, ferment, and distill a whiskey from start to finish in that day. Um, you get to taste all the cuts and really kind of understand the actual uh, physical uh, goings-ons in a distillery. Uh, we learn a little bit about the biochemistry here on this side, and then you get to take home two bottles of the whiskey and a small barrel to age your own whiskey at home that you make that day. Um, it's always really fun. We have a great mix of people that you know, are, are in the process of starting a commercial distillery and some people that maybe are doing at home production in some capacity. Um, and then a lot of people that just, you know, want to know more. Yeah, it's a, it's a fun knowledge base to have. Makes it very popular at your next dinner party if you uh, can answer all the whiskey questions. And for any of the moms out there who may be fans of distilled spirits, keep in mind uh, Mother's Day is right around the corner. So if you're looking Absolutely. for a gift, that's a cool option. Absolutely. Yeah. It, great Mother's Day. And are you doing everything by appointment or are you allowing folks to do walk-in? How's that working? So we, um, we, are, uh, we are doing uh, walk-ins. Um, we do have online reservations available. Um, because we are at slightly limited capacity, we do encourage everybody to book online. Um, we're doing full, full hour-long slots for everybody. 
um, so we can get everybody in comfortable, safely um, uh, in here. So sometimes when we're really busy, we'll have to turn away walk-ins. Um, so definitely, if you have any interest in coming down to visit us, I would encourage booking online. Um, and uh, especially if you're interested in the tours, uh, those ones, they, they go pretty quick. So. And uh, what uh, what is your capacity right now? You guys have a pretty large tasting room space. You're fairly wide open. What are, what are you able to accommodate right now? We do, yeah. So we are um, legally, uh, we are allowed a little over 100 people in here. Um, we have chosen to limit that a little bit more. Uh, we have, I think, space for 10 groups at a time in here with plenty of space in between them. And we can do the tours where people can spread pretty well. So. Um, yes, uh, I think now groups up to 10 are allowed and, and we do it separated. Out like that. Abby from our team just noted that she's a dog mom and she needs a Mother's Day gift. So I'm going to have to convince her Corgi to purchase her a tour and, uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and distilling 101 space. I, I would be remiss to say we, we are, uh, I think, one of the only dog friendly distilleries uh, in, in Maryland. So you can bring your dog inside here, they can hang out. There's, we have two shop dogs that, that stay here. They're very friendly. Uh, some, some, some days you get a, get a nice, a nice little pack going in here. So, so bring your dog to our distillery. I think I've been in there several times and have been uh, harassed by at least four or five dogs. They are all wonderful and they're great company when you're uh, hanging out and uh, just checking out the space. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you want to make one more cocktail? I don't want to. I don't want to force you to make another one, but if you want to show how to do one more, that would be kind of fun, and then we can uh, wrap it up. Yeah, the um, I, I was thinking I might do the uh, Gimlet Crush uh, because we are obviously talking about Maryland spirits. Uh, you have to talk about the Orange Crush, which is Maryland's cocktail. So we did a little variation on the Orange Crush using our Epiphany uh, Organic Vodka and our Blood Orange Saffron uh, Cordial. So I'll get this all ready here for you guys. And this recipe is also uh, available on our website. So if you go to mcclintockdistilling.com, slash Gimlet's for Green Week. You can see a, a map of all participating restaurants um, as well as the recipes uh, that we went over today as well as some extra ones you can use. So, I'm gonna start out with our vodka, three ounces of vodka. Again, love Gimlet's because they are very spirits forward. And we'll take our blood orange saffron, half an ounce of this one. And then for the lime juice, a little bit less. We don't want it to overpower the blood orange. So just a quarter ounce of this. Then we'll shake that over ice here. These concrete countertops come in handy, don't they? They do, they do indeed. You see, dude, you don't even know your own strength. You smash oh, yeah. the thing in there. Should get too much. Use a soft metal like copper and it's all wedged. Here, I'll give my, my very strong and handsome business partner, Tyler, to open it up. Oh, here. God. This is not going to happen. <laughs> oh, my God. You I know, right? Up. Now I know why you beat it against the bar every time. <laughs> All right. I'm moving down the line. This is like that jar of mayonnaise that you just can't get open, so you just pass it around to everybody until it pops. So I have now our entire production team behind the bar working on getting this uh, unstuck. 
this pretty good. Right. I hope everybody tuning in right now appreciates how much goes into making these awesome Thirsty Thursday videos, how much behind the scenes work goes into it, the whole team's involved. Yeah. Oh, there we go. And in case you're wondering, that's Zach Kennedy was the one to actually get this get this done. Howdy, neighbor. Uh, that, so that was the third person to come over and help me. All right. So, bring that out. And then for this crust, we want to give it just a little bit of effervescence. So I like to top it off just with some club soda here. Garnish with a lime. There we go. It's a orange crush gimlet. Well, that looks delightful. Yeah. So uh, you mentioned tastings. When folks come into your tasting room, are you offering these wonderful cocktails to your guests or is it tastings only? Uh, so right now uh, we are just doing tastings. Um, I'll do a little, give you guys a little sneak peek. Uh, we are putting up drywall at our cocktail bar uh, next week. So we are hoping uh, sometime this summer, uh, we have the building next to us that will be a uh, full service cocktail bar um, where we'll have a lot of really cool drinks and we'll continue to do the flights and the tours and the tastings here at our main distillery. Um, so we'll, we'll have a, a nice little, little mix here, compound if you will. Stay away from the word compound. It makes you guys sound like a cult. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I really suffered into shaving my head to, for charity a few weeks ago, so we want to stay away. I, I really thought you were uh, you were putting it all out there, man. You came in looking like a new monk, and I'm like, okay, I, I see what he's got going on here. We're gonna have a following soon. <laughs> what other news uh, do you want people to know about what's going on with you guys? You have any new spirits in the works? Anything interesting that people should be keeping an eye out for? Yeah, so um, we have uh, next month, um, we will be releasing um, our first new whiskey since our straight bourbon a few years ago. Um, this is a Monongahela 100% rye whiskey that we did in collaboration with the Civil War Medicine Museum. Um, we use a varietal of rye grown here in Maryland uh, that would have very likely been used to make rye whiskey um, in the 1800s. Uh, we use stone burr milling techniques. We use uh, a propagated yeast fermentation, pretty much as authentic a Civil War era rye whiskey we, as we could do. Um, it's been aging for uh, almost three years, um, and that will be uh, released with part of the proceeds going to the Civil War uh, Medicine Museum uh, here in Frederick. So um, we'll have more details on that on our social media. So if, if you don't follow us on Facebook and Instagram, uh, give us a follow. I'm sure you guys are going to find some interesting, uh, some interesting events to do some crossover work there. They always yeah. have some great ideas behind what they want to do. Yes, they definitely. They they had some stuff that we had to, to tone down. That was like that sounds really really awesome, but it's uh, it's uh, a little crazy. So, should be fun. Should be fun. No, knowing David over there, I'm certain that there will be a cigar and whiskey evening somewhere involved. So when that comes up, I need to know about it. Yes, that will definitely be happening. Uh, we're working out the details on that. Uh, yeah. Very cool. Well, everybody who tuned in this afternoon, thank you for uh, taking a little bit more than a half hour of your day to uh, learn about what's going on at McClintock. I really want to uh, just say thanks to Braden and his team uh, and, and Tyler over there for everything that they've been doing to uh, make a positive impact on Maryland Spirits. You guys are doing a great job, and we appreciate it as your guild. Um, thank you for coming up with this great idea and uh, getting your, your restaurant partners activated to help out in a meaningful way. This is pretty cool. Absolutely. Well, thank you for taking the time and having me on today. And uh, for everybody who would like to know more about McClintock, check them out at mcclintockdistilling.com. Check out the awesome list of recipes they have and check out the link to the restaurants that are participating. Uh, Braden said there are more than 45 of them participating in the uh, D.C., Delaware, and Maryland area. Uh, make an impact on our community and our ecology by drinking a delicious cocktail. doesn't take much. <laughs> it's an easy way to do some good. That's it. And visit us at MarylandSpirits.org for any uh, updates on the Maryland distilling industry. There's a lot of great things going on. You'll see a lot of great news there. And uh, we look forward to seeing you uh, in the future. And I am going to play that video for all of you now because it did upload.
Braden, have a great one, bud. All right, thanks again, Jim.